this talk is about experience. And so in that very breath of air, this is not how the do it. It's one way of doing it. There's 50 million ways to skin a cat, okay? So whatever works in your practice, whatever works, in, whatever works for you, take those pearls home. But I'm gonna share some personal experiences with you, okay? And it's not gonna be about me, per se, but it's gonna be about how I've experienced things and I've translated it into my office. And as a matter of fact, I believe that there's a lot of things that each one of us can use our open eyes if we just open our eyes and open our minds to translate certain things into your practices that particularly as of yesterday, I picked up one that was a wow moment in and of itself. So I will tell you this much, take a sit, seat back, kick your feet up, we just had lunch, don't fall asleep on the uh, food coma just yet. Um, and, and just kind of soak this all in, if you will, because it really is all about the wow. And I get so excited when I start talking about wow. The premise behind this, we want our patients leaving our office saying, holy cow. Or, and as I state in quotes, wow. And so here's where we are in our society. Our society consists of you know, instant gratification. We touched a little bit on that when we start talking about our tech-savvy patients. We talk about how ease is, is a huge major player in keeping patients engaged and working with, uh, with you um, and continue to come in to see you. And I say working with you is what I mean that is patients want to work alongside with you. I, I truly believe because in, in, the, in the end, what is, who benefits? You and the patient in the end. Patients are definitely technology savvy and customer service. And I put in parentheses, who really cares? And that's kind of my snide comment, if you will, to back to the internet age and the internet type of ordering and glasses and whatnot. And how many of you are on ODs on Facebook? I'm not gonna make too many references and things of that sort where folks are talking about. I just recently, I don't get on there very much, but I recently saw something about a particular frame line where that initials are WP. Um, and, and somebody shot a photo of it complaining about a patient came in and wanted to get it fixed. And um, then the thread just went on and on and on and on and on with all the difficulties that people have had with getting that prescription filled online. So my question is, do patients really care, if you will, do customers really care about customer service? And I'm gonna argue absolutely 100%, 110%, 120%, yes they do. Okay, yes they do. And a lot of this really, really revolves around what do you do? And again, not to be offensive, to take a step back, take a deep breath, and kind of soak a little bit of this in. Look yourself in the mirror and say, listen, is this something that I can do and implement into my, into my practice and serve practices today? First things first, you have to have a foundation. You absolutely have to have a foundation. Do you have a mission statement? Do you have something that's measurable in your office, okay? And it's a yes or no here, but this is our mission statement in our office. And I will tell you that every potential hire, every visitor into our office is presented with these points, okay? Timely and efficient care, we alluded to that earlier. Timely and efficient care is that we're timely, we're respectful of your time, and we're gonna be efficient, okay? Moral and ethical judgments, Okay, judgments that we, we will treat you the same as we treat everybody else, regardless of size, shape, age, race, social, social, social economic status, et cetera. We're gonna treat you the same, okay? And then lastly, the most important part, to wrap it and zip it all together, a memorable experience for everybody that walks in the door, okay? And that's not necessary. I didn't say the patients that walk in the door. I meant everybody that walks in the door. So, Mr. Lucas, who always comes with his wife because his wife has a chronic condition that I see on a regular basis, probably every three, two to, two, two to three months. Mr. Lucas comes to see me annually. I know Mr. Lucas is gonna be with Ms. Lucas every time he comes in. And he sits in those five chairs that we talked about previously. And I walk out to Mr. Lucas and I ask him how he's doing that day a memorable experience that, that he's gonna expect that Dr. G's gonna come out and greet him and say hi to him just for five seconds and then go back because he knows that I'm busy with patients but to take that extra step, that extra, take the, go the extra mile 
to make it an experience for everybody that walks in the door, okay? Not to mention that Mr. Lucas also gets a few other treats when he comes in the office as well that we'll lead to later on. I intentionally, by the way, did not give handouts for this particular talk. So if you, have, if you want the copies of the handouts, please email me. My email was on the front one, it was on the front um, slide, but gicare.com, drg at gicare.com, I will send you out the handouts afterwards because it kind of takes away a little bit from this talk if I give you the handouts ahead of time. Here's what I believe. How many of y'all seen this before? If you have, then great, we're gonna revisit. If you haven't, then we're gonna open up some eyes. I truly believe that the elements of true customer care revolve around five points, okay? Price, product, access, experience, and service. And we're gonna go through each one of these, okay? So price is price, okay? We had a conversation at lunch. I was sitting next to one of your vendor sponsors. Great, by the way, support those that support you. Okay, we have a saying in Texas that, say, that, that, that goes, if all things created equal, support those that support you. Okay, and so if you've got sponsors coming to you and you want continued sponsorship and continued support, continue to sponsor those that support you and do business with those that support you, all right? So when it comes, I was sitting next to your vendor sponsor, one of your vendor sponsors, and we were talking about managed care and this, that, and the other with some of your colleagues, and you're not gonna win the price war, okay? Just face it, you're not gonna win the price war, all right? But there are elements of customer service, I, I believe, that price does not play a role for some folks, okay? Price just does not play a role. There are definitely product concerns amongst consumers out there, okay? Products that are unique. How many of y'all have, you don't have to answer, this is more rhetorical, okay? How many of y'all have independent frame lines versus corporate frame lines? You know, private label contact lenses versus, um, you know, more kind of uh, you know, company-based or corporate-based uh, contact lenses. What about specialty fits? What about things of that sort when it comes to contact lenses? Uh, things of that sort. So that's, that's your product, if you will. Okay? And your product also, by the way, in the, medical, in the medical world, revolves around the level of um, competency, if you will, that you, that you portray in the exam lane, the things that you do particular to the person that's next to you. So for instance, in my particular area, I have, within a stone's throw, literally about two, about uh, 150 yards, I have an optometrist to my right, in caddy corner, if you will, to my diagonal right this way, I have another one. So on the four corners of this intersection, I've got me, I've got the other one, and I've got the other one. The only corner that doesn't have one is this corner right over here, okay? So our products are all different, okay? I was the first one on the block as I talked to, talked to the point initially. I was the first one on the block when I came in, and so when everybody started coming in, this is what I did, is I reached out and I said, hey, listen, what is it that you do? I called them, I said, what is it that you do? I want, I'm curious because I wanna be able to share in the wealth. I wanna be able to share in these patients that we have. What is it that you specialize in? It may be keratoconic fits, okay? It may be retinal pathology, it may be glaucoma, you know? You can be all things to all people to a certain extent, okay? But if there's somebody that does it better than you, share in it, share in it. But your product is gonna be your product. Now, whether that be a material type of a product or a service type of a product, you have a product, okay? And that's what I'm describing when I say product. Access, okay, is the next one. Now, this is where I usually kinda of knock people off of their socks, uh, knock people off of their chairs and knock their socks off, okay? How many of y'all wanna see patients with an appointment, say right around 8.30 p.m. in the evening, maybe 9, 9.30? p.m. in the evening. How many of y'all have visited my website and looked at my office hours? My last appointment on Thursdays and Fridays is at 9.30. My last appointment on Mondays and Tuesdays is at 8.30, okay? Between my associate and myself, we have 12 hour to 14 hour days, okay? Now, the office does, okay? Now, not, not necessarily us, okay? But we have an 
access ability, if you will, and accessibility of 12 to 14 hours per day, okay? Our Wednesdays are the only days that we take kind of our break and we have an, um, an evening to ourselves. She spends her time with her husband. I spend time with my fiance or maybe even on the road. Um, but Wednesday afternoons are afternoons that we don't see patients after 5 p.m. But even at that, we still have, we have, still have hours. Okay, that just kind of shake a few folks. Um, but it is about access, all right? Last, uh, last two, experience. Now experience and service, these last two are tied together because they're oftentimes naturally tied together and they don't need to be. That's why they're separated out, okay? Experience, the warm fuzzies, the feeling that you get in the office, okay? We're gonna talk more experience here in a minute. Service is this service aspect. What is it that I've done for you lately? Okay, so can y'all see the different aspects of these things, or the different definitions of these aspects, if you will? And here's where I'm gonna tell you. We talked about this in the previous talk. There are, of these five, I truly believe you can only excel and be top notch on two and two only. That's where everything gets muddy, okay? Take back on Monday these notes and figure out what it is that you are the best at, the top two that you're the best at. And as we go through these and define these through some examples, there's, you're, you're gonna be able to hit them right on the head. If you can't, if it's too muddied for you, then that's why we're rehoning it, that's why we're refining it, that's why we're bringing it all back together, and that's why at the end of the day, your patients are gonna go, oh, wow, holy cow, I love that. I can't say it now without seeing it. <laughs> hey, you, holy smokes, this is the place to be. It feels like home and experience, okay? I've never had service like that before. We talked about deliveries, okay? But you can only excel at two of these five, and it's your responsibility, if you will, and it's your assignment to go back on Monday, if you will, or maybe to your hotel rooms and to, to your quiet little corners and figure out what it is that your practice exists for, okay? So let's go through some examples of what I believe is at R, examples of other parts of industry and define them, if you will, okay? We had a conversation at lunch today about McDonald's. Of those five elements, what would you think about McDonald's? Where do you think McDonald's excels and stands for of those five elements? Uh, it's open for the floor. Okay, price. And for the most part, access. You know, when I say price to a certain extent, McDonald's prices are going higher and higher and higher and higher a little bit, but there's no really warm feeling about, about in, the, in the experience at, at, at McDonald's, okay? Um, there's really no, it's a certain there can be some service, okay? But a hamburger is a hamburger, a frozen hamburger is a frozen hamburger, right? And I'm not bad mouthing these guys, I'm just saying, they've chosen that route to say, listen, when I see those golden arches, we know where we are, access-wise, okay? And price-wise, we know that we can go to the dollar menu or whatnot, or to the value menu, if you will, and use it and go right there. If I need something quick and something in my mouth just for just kind of snacking, that's where we go, okay? What about the next one? Starbucks. Somebody said service. Experience. Somebody said product. Okay. See how this is a little bit of an exercise just within the folks that we know? How about taking it back home? Okay. Where else can you get, but well, access and products, okay? In the United States, okay, in Houston, we have, the, we have, we have three Starbucks in a four intersection corner, FYI. Okay, I'm not kidding you, we, we're, we're known for this one, okay? This one has three Starbucks in a four intersection corner, it's ridiculous. So you talk about access, anywhere you look up, you'll find a Starbucks. You've been driving down to Toronto last night, I see on the side of the road all the Starbucks signs and you know, they're in hotels and whatnot. But where else when it comes to product, can you get a you know, double shot macchiato upside down with the Splenda and cold with, um, I don't know, whatever, you know, shaken, not stirred, I don't know. Um, but they have specific product. Okay, they have specific product that, frankly, you're not gonna go anywhere else to go find, right? You take that, you take that to uh, Tim Hortons, and they look at you like, huh? Right, they, I mean, shake what, Splenda? I know what Splenda is, you know, 
but they have specific things. And so when it comes to Starbucks, it's not so much about the experience, because what are they doing? They're yelling across the way, right? Um, to a certain extent, service is, is a part of, uh, of Star Starbucks. But I've been to Starbucks before where I've sat in lines and I'm going, oh my gosh, hey, I, got, I don't have time for this. So, you know, sometimes I just kind of sit there and tap and watch and whatnot, but I've already paid for it. But, you know, sometimes that, that deters me a little bit, okay? Ultimately, what brings me back is I can't get it anywhere else, okay? And I know where to get it at when it comes to access. I know how to find it. I was pleased to see this on the side of the highway as I was driving. Okay, I really was pleased to see um, Costco on the side of the highway because sometimes I can go to some regions and people have no earthly idea what I'm talking about when it comes to Costco. Um, Costco. Who, what do you think about Costco? Price. I hear price. What else? Product. What else? Availability. So that, that's more like access. Experience, we're gonna hit all five of them. Somebody wanna argue service for a point? Okay, so before I show you anything, how many of y'all have had an experience, a positive experience at Costco? Show of hands. Okay, I'm assuming that everybody else that didn't show their hands haven't even, hasn't challenged it or maybe not a member, okay? The reason why I'm going to tell you is service is a key component of Costco, okay? It may not seem like it. Experience is definitely not a component of it. I mean, it's concrete, right? It's basically what it is, concrete and pallets, okay? And I'll, I'll show you these. It's product and service. If you walk into a, uh, into a Costco, and this is where I'm going to share a couple of stories. If you walk into a Costco and you look at the, at the wall at customer service, okay, customer service, it says if you're not completely satisfied, we will refund your membership, okay? So I'm gonna throw, I'm gonna throw out a couple of crazy stories that you guys are gonna go, listen, it, I, that's, that's wacko, I don't, I don't believe it, but I'm gonna tell you, it really happens. And can I tell you that I've had patient, I've, had, I've sat in the line at Costco before and watched somebody bring an empty tray of fruit, and I'm going, no way, wait a second, up to the countertop and go, this fruit was so terrible that I couldn't even bring it back to you. <laughs> and without a blink, gave the money back like that. No questions asked, nothing of the sort, okay? Do you all know that a few years ago, Costco actually had the reel back on their on their policy, if you will, of returning electronics and computers? Because how often do computers change? Every three to six months, right? There's a new one out, something you know, bigger, badder, whatever. They had to reel back because folks were actually bringing back their computers and they were allowing them to bring back their computers after you know, years at a time and like cleaning their, 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 their hard drives off and bringing them back. And they were giving them full value back for them, okay? My personal experience is this, which is quite interesting when it comes to the service aspect of it, is that I actually, I was buying like a DVD set and it was, you know, they had different components, series one, series two, series three, series four, series five. And this day and age of our digital media, how easy is it for you to take a, a DVD set and, you know, unwrap it, copy it, take it back, right? And I was like, okay, I wanna be sensitive to that, but I wanna make sure I'm getting the right one. So I asked the lady at the front desk or, or, when I'm checking out, I said, listen, all right, now what do I gotta do? I gotta bring it back, shrink wrapped, I'm sure. I, I gotta bring it back with the receipt, how many days do I have left, you know, et cetera. And she goes, no, just watch it. And I went, really? And then I started paying attention. I started paying attention. If you wanna see some interesting stuff, go hang out in the return line at Costco. Okay, and there's some pretty interesting things going on over there. I've seen people bringing back stuff like Use TV. Have you ever seen the pallet where they, people have brought in like a TV that they assembled or like a bed frame where they've assembled or maybe even a mattress they've slept on and they bring it back? But it, it's all in service. Now how they do this, how they do this, I'll tell you how they do this, is because they, they have such a turnover when it comes to anything that they bring in, just FYI on the backside of Costco, is that they're, they're confident that they're gonna sell 80% of everything that they bring in, okay? And that's just their margins. I'm just gonna tell you that's how it works. Okay, and that, and that ties into the product. 
where else can you buy designer jeans for, you know, super designer jeans at, at Costco for, you know, half the price that you would buy at a, at a retail store, okay? There are unique things at Costco that you can't get everywhere else or that you wouldn't be, that you'd be surprised that you'd get at Costco. How many of y'all been to Costco.com and looked in the funeral section? Yeah, I said the funeral section. <laughs> Buy yourself a casket right there. I'm not kidding. There's a funeral link on Costco that you can buy yourself a casket. Pretty dang impressive, actually. Um, all right. Now, I got everybody like on their iPads looking this thing up. <laughs> Buying one, actually. Why are you there? Get two for one on it. Um, so, the epitome, and you all saw this coming. When we start talking about service, in my opinion, nobody has it down like the Ritz-Carlton. And anybody that knows me, and anybody that follows me, anybody that, that, that knows any of my trends, not because it's fancy, okay? Because I will tell you this, this is where I take an aside and I start working kind of a different angle for you all to understand where I'm getting this from. Everything that I've ever learned has been in hotel lobbies when it comes to customer care. I kid you not, everything that I've ever learned has come from sitting in hotel lobbies. I will sit in a hotel lobby for 30 minutes to 45 minutes just observing how things happen, okay? And in my opinion, the best thing, and y'all have a really beautiful one up here in Toronto, um, at the Ritz-Carlton here up in Toronto. I went there yesterday actually for lunch before the Jays game, and I went there specifically because I knew I could be taken care of there, and I watched and I'm going to tell you a fun story about this. How many of y'all know what I'm, where I'm getting to with Ritz-Carlton? Experience and definitely service. There is no if, ands, about it. They're never going to win the battle on price, right? Never going to win the battle on price. They're not going to win the battle on accessibility, okay? Because in the state of Texas, guess what? how many Ritz-Carlton's there are in the state of Texas? One. And guess who they know very, very well? Dr. Kevin G, um, because I'm there. it's in Dallas, Texas, and I go whenever I have a free weekend just to hang out, okay, seriously. Um, and, and when it comes to product, yeah, it, it, there's other luxury hotels out there, okay? But what, they, what keeps people coming back to the Ritz-Carlton is the experience, is the feel of it feels like home. And I will tell you, when I walk into um, a place like this, I feel like I'm at home. It doesn't matter if it's in Ontario or if it's in Dallas or it happens to be in Cleveland, Ohio or whatever it may be. It feels like home. Everything's the same. Everything is um, all about being like I'm in my own home in a boat, okay? A couple of tricks of the trade here that I will tell you and a couple of tricks of the trade that you can take home with you, okay, when it comes to the service ex experience, uh, uh, component of this is they take notes. Now, this might get a little scary for you, okay? But you could do it at your office. On our intake forms, we talked about this in the previous one. On our intake forms, one of the things that we ask you is, we ask you, what's your favorite food? We ask you what your hobbies are. Obviously, for vocational reasons, visual demands, things of that sort. But I want to talk to you about soccer. And I want to talk to you about, you know, the fact that this new company called Tiff's Treats in Houston that started out in Austin as a pop-up truck is a, cough, is, is, a, is a cookie place, and it's gone booming big. And I want to talk to you about how Tiff's Treats has awesome cookies, um, and you need to go to Tiff's Treats. Or, as we had the conversation a while ago, the reason why I bring up Tim Hortons is we have a Shipley's Donuts coming up in our, in our, in our shopping center, and a Shipley's Donuts has caused some headaches, if you will, putting in some drainage pipes and things of that sort. And the conversation I had with a particular patient before I left, she likes donuts. And I said, is it going to be worth it, all the trouble that you've had to deal with because our shopping center has been closed, the driveway has been closed periodically, because and you have to drive around and make a U-turn and whatnot? She goes, no, my favorite place is Tim Hortons. And I went, really? I was like, where's that at? She goes, I'm from Canada. And I went, hey, you know what, I'm going to Canada in a couple of days. So um, one of the things that I'm going to do when I, when I get an opportunity here before I leave is I'm going to take myself a little selfie in front of Tim Hortons. And I'm going to tweet it 
on our phone, on our, on our, on our Facebook page. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell y'all, y'all go run into our Facebook page, you'll see our Canadians come out, okay? They, they come, they come out, and they'll, they'll come out and they'll, they'll comment on all kinds of fun stuff. But I will tell you, we always ask that because here's the other thing too, what happens when we screw up? And we're gonna talk about what do we do on the rebound, okay? On what we do on the recovery, all right? What do we do? We take notes, all right? We take notes and little Sally, who happens to be, I'm gonna give you a couple of instances, who's little Sally, who happens to come in for her first eye exam, says she likes lollipops. Well, guess what? We happen to be a little bit slow that day and we don't typically give out candy, okay? I respect the dentists in our area. Um, we don't give out candy on a regular basis. We happen to be a little bit slow that day, so I told the front desk, I said, listen, go across the street, buy me a bag of lollipops, okay? When she got done, lollipops service and experience. We don't ask that question just because it's trife, uh, just to be trife. We ask that question for real reasons, okay? And then what do you think Sally's gonna go? Sally's gonna go, I went to my eye doctor and he gave me a lollipop after I told him he was my favorite, my favorite, my favorite uh, food was lollipops, all right? We deployed that and went quick on that one. The other thing too that was, re that, that was really, really cool is, um, I just lost my train of thought. All right, we'll come back to that in just a minute. Um, so ultimately, when it comes to that experience, I want folks to feel like they're having their eye exam without really feeling like they have their eye exam, okay? You wanna know that you're staying away from home, but not feel like you're staying away from home, okay? All right. Um, and I will tell you this much. If you, it, if you have the, the opportunity, it'll be the best $400 you spend for one night if you learn from, from an opportunity like this. I'm gonna tell you, it's, it's, it, I learn something every single day, every single day. Prime example, what was the weather like yesterday in Toronto? Anybody know? A little rainy, right? So, as I said, we were going to the Blue Jays game, we parked a car at the Ritz, had lunch at the Ritz, hung out at the Ritz for a little bit, and we're about to go over to Rogers Center. We walk out, it's a little cold and drizzly. Guess what happens? Here's an umbrella. Obviously, it's got this big Ritz Carlton logo on it. And we're walked to the, we walk to the Rogers Center with their umbrellas that they gave us. They provided us. They actually gave us. They didn't just provide it. They gave it to us. They just keep it. Um, and we, wa we walked over there. Now, who was with me? My mother and father actually are on this trip with me. And my mother goes, and they just gave me this umbrella. I said, do you not get it? Do you not get it? This is exactly what we go after in the office. And so just to let you know, we're a little ahead of the curve on this one because we have umbrellas in our office too. And we actually walk our patients to their cars if it's raining outside too hard because it does rain quite a bit down in Houston. And I tell all of my team, I said, listen, if you ruin your clothes, I will pay your drive cleaning bill. Just give it to me. Just do it. Just do it. All right. Um, this is one of y'all's local guys. And y'all have had a little controversy around it, but I will tell you that I live in it if I'm not in a suit, okay? I live in it if I'm not in a suit. And going back to my, my conversation I had previously about your person with the headset smiling quite a bit, these people smile more than anything. And I've actually tried to hire some of these people um, going into our local store saying, you know, what is, it, what is it that makes you so happy to work here, right? Um, what they're known for, those of you all that wear the, wear the product, is service and product, okay? Their product is unique, all right? They, got, they, have, they have special ways of washing these things, okay? And so I'm leading all into this here in a minute. When it comes to the service element, they always ask you whether or not you, how, do you, how does it feel? Is there anything that you, is, can I get you something else? There's always a water, a pure water fountain there. There's a clean restroom in there, okay? Um, the other thing too is they tell you how to wash the product. Okay. Have you been here before, etc. The product is unique in and of itself. It's not just your Joe Schmo workout slash yoga uh, clothes. It's unique. It's got silver scent in it. This is how they this is how they brainwash it. It's got silver scent in it that is anti stink. Okay. It's got Lulon in it that's moisture wicking. Okay. Moisture wicking. Okay. They tell you these types of things. These are products that are unique. So how do we bring that back to our offices? This is the frame line that you can only get here. This is a frame line that, for instance, 
what am I wearing? Uh, I'm wearing salt. So this is a, this is a frame line that, I, that, that you can only get here, a, a, a frame line called Tom Davies. Tom Davies is my number one frame line. And you know why? Because it's a design by line. It's a design by line. There's some ready to wear frames out there, but for the most part, whatever you want, I can customize for you. I can make a different shape, I can make a different size, I can make a different color, okay? That's my product, okay? How is the service? And we talk about the service about deliveries, we talk about the service about opening up doors. Oh, we haven't talked about opening up doors, we'll talk about opening up doors here in a minute. But the service at, 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 at Lululemon is amazing for me. All right, and you know we were building up to this one. How many, do you have Nordstrom here? Oh, soon? You're missing out, that's why. Excuse me here for a second. If I had to build, if, if, here's the thing, if I had to build my little um, Farmville village, my Farmville village would probably consist of a Starbucks to eat and drink it, a Lululemon to wear my clothes in, um, a Nordstrom basically just to hang out in, because sometimes I just go to Nordstrom just to hang out, um, and a Ritz-Carlton where I could live. Seriously, it's not about being fancy, it's not about spending money, it's about surrounding yourself with excellence. It's around surrounding yourself with experiences that never get stale. Something new every single day. The umbrella yesterday. How many times have I been to Ritz Carlton? I even put these guys on my stinking lecture, okay? And they knocked my socks off yesterday. Just another experience, okay? Nordstrom the same way, okay? What about Nordstrom? And, and I, I'll, I'll throw this out there because y'all don't have it here yet, but if y'all have experienced one before, you'll know that there is a shopping experience when it comes to Nordstrom, okay? There is just a shopping experience when it comes to Nordstrom. You've got live piano playing, okay? You've got, um, you've got marble floors, okay? And I don't know about y'all, but there are some Nordstroms, I, I vow, jam your cell signal. I think they do because all, they, don't, they don't want you distracted by, by anything else when you're in there, okay? And it really is all encompassing. Where else can I get my shoes shined, eat dinner, and shop all at the same time? Okay. Service-wise, we always hear the stories about what they take back and what they don't. I've heard stories about people bringing back tires in Nordstrom or they didn't even buy them at Nordstrom and they took them back. Um, but when it comes to service, I, I, I believe in this so much. Here's where I can, this, this is where y'all can, where, where you all can take this home to you. This is point number two, okay, if you will, pearl number two, okay. Pearl number one, figure out what your, what your practices and offices stand for, okay. What do they associate with? What two do you excel in when it comes to customer service? Okay, what are the two things that you excel in? Okay, pearl number two, and I know we have some support staff in here, and they're nodding their head quite a bit, but think about taking a retreat to something luxurious, if you will, something that has something, um, an experience to it, okay? Here's what we've done. On a quarterly basis, if we meet our goals, and typically we do, and it continues to build, by the way, our goals continue to go higher and higher and higher. On a, on a um, quarterly basis at the Houston Galleria, we have a Nordstrom, we have all these stores in there, except for the Ritz-Carlton, obviously. And what we do is we start out on a scavenger hunt. Everybody gets a Nordstrom gift card from me, okay? Every one of my team members gets a Nordstrom gift card, gift card from me, it's about 100 bucks, okay? And I say, listen, you get to spend this, and thank you for your work, okay? Number one, though, when you spend it, I want you to buy something frivolous, okay? Something that you don't want and you're gonna take back. I want you to see the experience of what it feels like to take something back at Nordstrom, okay? Number two, I want you to um, try on a pair of shoes at Nordstrom. What they were known for when they first came into the, to this world was their shoes. Okay, and to this day, it's pretty much the only place where I buy shoes, okay? The reason why? They bring out two pairs of shoes every single time. Every single time, they bring out two pairs of shoes, or they bring out a pair of shoes and, and shoe trees. So what do you need? Both, right? So what do you need? You need a pair of daytime glasses, and you need a pair of nighttime glasses. Driving glasses, regular glasses, right? Double. Second pair of sales goes through the roof for the next six weeks after every time we do this, we do this uh, retreat, okay? Not only that, 
We tell them to go to Lululemon, try something on. Ask them, uh, don't even ask them, but wait for them to tell you what, what, uh, how to take care of it. Okay? We send them over to places like David Yerman, who, who, whom we carry their frame line for, so they can learn about the product. Okay? And then we wrap up at the very end, we wrap at the very end at the top of the bistro in Nordstrom where we have dinner, and then we talk and we compare notes. Okay? All things included, gift cards and everything, you know, 1,500 US dollars, get that back in one day in the office on Monday when we go back. Period. All right. So I kind of teased this at dinner, at, at lunch a while ago, and I teased this at, um, at the previous lecture, uh, that number one, I want all of my staff, all of my team to exceed, meet or exceed my expectation level on my surveys. All right. That's, that's their goal. That's what they have to do. They have to either meet me or exceed me. And when they do it, we're all taking a vacation to the Ritz-Carlton in Dallas, all paid by me, and you're going to really be able to experience what it's all about. Okay? And that's kind of the teaser that I, that I was describing. Because here's the thing. When I talked about teamwork, and I'm going to bring it back because I'm going to tie in some other things that we, talked, that we didn't touch on. Talk about teamwork, we're only as good as those that surround us. Okay, and I know there's team members in here, there's probably support staff in here that are probably nodding their heads, and to a certain extent, I'm gonna tell you, you can nod your head all you want, but it, that's a lot of pressure for you, but you support your doctors, okay? We could be the best doctors in the world out there, okay? Behind those closed doors, we could be the best doctors in the world, but if we, are, if we, get, if we have patients that have to get through the riffraff to get to see us, they can't see the magic. They can't see how good we are. So your team has to set you up to begin with. And I want my team out front knowing that they're empowered to do everything that they can do to make that experience positive so that I can follow up with it and we can be all wrapped up and be all on the same page. And that's why things like this on, um, on retreats and whatnot exist. All right. Any questions about any of that? Everybody's food coma? Mind boggling? Maybe not so much mind boggling, but just kind of, uh. All right. Patient needs versus patient wants. Your patients are coming to you because they want to see better, and oftentimes they want to see better quickly, right? How many times, how satisfied do you think a patient's going to be if they walk out the door and they walk in the door and they're 20, 50, and they walk out the door and they're 20, 40? And, or your proposed solution is 20, 40? Pretty much not. I mean, if they're healthy and they're correctable, right? So that's a patient need. That's what a patient needs, okay? Here's what your patients want, okay? They want rapid turnarounds. They want things like diagnostic lenses, trial lenses, if you will. And they really want to look cool. They really do. They want to look good in what you, what you prescribe to them. And when I say prescribe to them, I'm not talking just the numbers in the prescription. I'm talking about the frames. I'm talking about the design of, the, of what they're going to be wearing, okay? What do I wear in the office? I specifically wear glasses in the office. I have a correction, by the way. But I, wear, I specifically wear glasses in the office that are cutting edge, things that folks like to see. And you know what? The, the number one frame that sells in the office is whatever Dr. G wears, for the most part. Not because they want to look like me, but because I sell it, because I talk about it. I said, this is what it is. This is what's unique. This frame's a salt frame, we call it. It's a salt frame. It's made out of California. It's an independent line. Okay? It's not something you're going to get everywhere. You're not going to look like everybody else. All right. Three steps to customer service. So we talked about pearl number one. Pearl number one, identify what it is that your practice exists for, okay? Pearl number two, maybe talk about, maybe start figuring out a way to do a retreat of some sort, okay? Step number three is this slide, okay? And and I'm going to tell you, copy it down, email me for the copies of this, the slides, but this is something you can anticipate, this is something you can implement when you get back on Monday, okay? A warm and sincere welcome, okay? A warm and sincere welcome. The word hello does not exist in our practice. It just doesn't. It just doesn't. And the word no problem does not exist in our practice. You know what no problem in, in implies? But there was a problem to begin with. That's right. This is, uh, I heard it today at breakfast. Somebody asked for something, like, can I get another knife? No problem. You know what that implies? It implies it's going to be, a, it, 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 
it inconvenienced me to go get you a, a, a knife. Okay, now maybe I'm getting nitty gritty. Maybe I'm getting picky about things, okay? But you know what? It's my pleasure to do that for you. Oh, really? That's kind of neat, okay? So everybody, welcome when you walk in the door, okay? Welcome back, all right? Um, the other thing, too, is anticipating these people's needs, okay? What is it that they want, you know? One of the things that we talked about in the, in the previous talk was, um, was uh, deliveries. How, who doesn't want a delivery? Who wants to actually come by and pick stuff up in our office, right? So we just outright openly ask folks, would you like, would you like for your, your order to be delivered once it's received? How many times do people actually take us up on it? Maybe about 2% of the time. But the mere fact that we offered it rings true, rings solid, and genuine because we're going to do it, okay? But it anticipates those folks' need, okay, and the things that they want. What else do we anticipate? We anticipate the fact that even though they didn't tell us that they, didn't want, to, they, don't, they don't want to wait time, that they don't get a wait time. Okay, we respect your time. Timely and efficient care. Okay, we are going to do everything we can to get you taken care of within 45 minutes in and out the door. Okay, all right. Obviously, there's going to be some outliers for reasons, but you're going to get quality care in the time frame that you're with us. Okay, the third thing, and it's something I'm very, very proud of, and it's something that we've always done. Okay, because we started from the ground up. We started with patient zero, and we're at patient, I don't even know these days but we're at patient, who knows, Buku's. Um, and the reason why we've been able to do this is because I truly believe a fond farewell. And what does a fond farewell do? Well, let's go back. Not just necessarily the Ritz-Carlton, let's talk about hotels in general. What is the last thing you typically experience when you walk out the door of a hotel? Somebody opens the door for you. Typically, typically when you're walking out the door. So 99% of the time, because I can't say we're 100% solid, nobody's 100%. 99% of the time, our patients are escorted to the door, walked out the door. That's why they can take the umbrella and know if it's raining outside, okay? And give them a nice farewell. It's great seeing you today, Ms. Jones. We'll look forward to seeing you next time. Let us know if there's anything we can do in the interim. Boom, that's it. How much of that costs money? None of it. This is something you can implement Monday morning when you go back in. Changing your verbiage, anticipating patients' needs, anticipating patients' wants, and then finally, a fond farewell. Okay. I got to the point where I, I'll be a little bit transparent here. I got to the point where I actually looked at doing like a concierge, where I just had somebody to stand in, not a greeter, not like a Walmart greeter. Um, but a concierge that, that stood at the front door and, you know, would greet somebody and bring somebody in. I, I've thought of crazy ideas, things like, like serving, you know, I, I'll go to um, places, you know, like where I get my hair cut and they, and they offer me a beer or something. I don't drink beer, but they offered me a beer or something like that. I've toyed with that idea. My, my legal team didn't like that very much. Um, they really didn't like the idea that I'd be serving beer and dilating people on the same night. Um, <laughs> So, I, you know, these things are endless. The things that you can do, the ways you can skin the cat are totally, it's, it's up to you. It depends on the extent at which you want to push it and how hard you want to push it. And I'll tell you, we push it, and we push it hard. Um, and sometimes I have to be reeled back in, okay? I sometimes just have to be reeled back in. Okay. I took a drink of water on purpose, but also, too, I left it up there on purpose. Do you see, do y'all see a common theme in here? Wine and champagne. Anybody that knows me won't text me, or won't call me, will text me, I'm just kidding. Um, anybody that knows, oops. Anybody that knows me will tell you that I love cupcakes. I do. I just do. It is what it is. And I like me a full-bodied glass of Cabernet wine. Upon checking it at Marina Del Rey, Ritz-Carlton, you'll see my bag back there. 
this was awaiting me the last time I was with Marina Del Rey, Ritz Carlton. Okay? Fiance and I got engaged at uh, the Ritz Carlton Phoenix, and they knew that I had actually requested this, and so no matter where we go at every Ritz Carlton, I mean, this was pre, this is post, every Ritz Carlton from here on out, I don't even have to ask for it, shows up with this. Now, this is where things get a little bit weird, okay? I'm going to tell you, this is where things get a little bit weird because they do take notes, okay? They troll. What's trolling? Anybody know what trolling is? Yeah. I mean, they start getting on my Facebook page. They start pulling stuff up. They find out that uh, Bella is a little shih tzu that we leave at home, typically. And Bella happened to be sitting on the side, a picture of Bella happened to be sitting on the side of the uh, nightstand upon arrival one time. <laughs> a little bit weird. But I bring up the point because we all could do the same thing, right? Making notes about talking about people's pets and whatnot and family members that are connected that continue to be referrals because of what, okay? A little bit weird. Over here, this is, this is a, just another one I threw in there because you see me, I immediately had to plug in my phone. Um, but neat stuff, okay? Crazy neat stuff. Here's the other thing too, I will tell you. And I am not, and my, one of my disclaimers did not include the Ritz-Carlton, so I'm gonna, not going to talk about the Ritz-Carlton anymore. Um, after, well, I will talk about the Ritz-Carlton more. But um, I will tell you that if you go to the Ritz-Carlton.com website and you scroll down to the corporate side, um, down at the bottom, there's some corporate links. You can actually take a Ritz-Carlton leadership conference. And when you take that Ritz-Carlton leadership concert, conference, it's like six hours of this all compacted in. And it is something phenomenal. It is something phenomenal. It's a couple thousand bucks, but it is something really, really phenomenal. And I, and I, and I, take it, I make it a habit to learn and take one of those in at least yearly. Okay. All right. Okay. We're not always 100%. I told you that a while ago. You can't be all things to all people. You can rock the boat every once in a while, okay? And a lot of this is um, recovery, right? It's not in about failing. As I told you previously, you're not always 100%. You're going to fail. Your problem with failing is, be is being afraid of failing, okay? The problem with failing is being afraid of failing because when, you when you're afraid to fail, you're in trouble. Okay? So just admit the fact that we all screw up and we all make mistakes. Okay? But what do we do afterwards? When you mess up, you leap. Okay? And this is implementation number four. Okay? This, is this is pearl number four. Okay? Pearl number four means leap. When you have an irate or upset or you fall short of the goal with a customer, you have to leap. And that means, number one, L stands for listen. E stands for empathize. A stands for ask. And P stands for produce. Easy, right? Not so much, really. Because if you're going to subscribe to it, get ready to become a pin cushion, get ready to become a bullet target, be ready, not literally, I'm from Texas so I have to make the distinction. Um, you, you, have, you have to get ready to take your punches. Get ready to become a punching bag, okay? Because if you subscribe to it, you have to listen. Our immediate natural human instinct when somebody comes at you is to be defensive, all right? The number one thing that folks falter in on this is getting past number one. If you can't get past number one, none of it else matters, okay? So you gotta listen. And what does that mean? That means putting your tail between your legs, gritting your teeth, smiling as much as you can, and let somebody throw all kinds of profanities and all kinds of, not necessarily all kinds of profanities, but certain profanities, okay? And you have, and, 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 and decencies at you, and you just have to listen and let them air it out. Because how many of y'all been in an argument? Everybody raises their hand. How many of y'all been in an argument? What fuels the argument? 
combativeness, coming right back, right? Going back and forth, whatever. If you are going to subscribe to 100% customer service, if you're going to subscribe to customer service to the top peak, you just shut up and listen. That's going to hurt, okay? It's going to hurt. You're going to take your shots, okay? And when I say there, there's, there's a level of belligerence, okay? I will agree with that. There's a point in which you go listen to a certain extent. Listen, you, I do not deserve to be treated like that, so you, you can stop with that right now. I agree with that to a certain extent, but you still got to let them air it out and just let them be, okay? Otherwise, they're going to come back and blow your building up or something crazy like that, okay? Seriously, I mean, that's how stuff gets started, in my opinion, all right? So number one, listen, okay? Empathize. Now, that, that, that's simple. Empathizing is easy. The thing you say when empathizing, the phrase, the key phrases with empathizing, if I were put in your shoes, that's what empathizing means. Empathy means feeling for a person, not sympathy, okay? Feeling as if you were in those person's shoes, that person's shoes. Empathizing, saying, if I were you, I would feel exactly the same way. Because frankly, if somebody's that upset to lay, in, lay into you, if you were that upset, you'd feel the exact same way too, okay? And that's the easy way of saying it. That's the easy way of saying it. Now, the ask is, is, is a little bit more difficult, but it gets easier as, as you move along, okay? The ask is simply, what can I do to make it better? Once all the hard feelings are out of the way and you've listened to it and you've said, listen, I'm a real person too. I understand. You must be terribly upset about this. I can tell. If I were put in your position, I'd feel the exact same way. But what can I do to make this better for you? However, when you ask, be ready to produce. Because don't ask if you're, ready, if you're not ready to produce. Okay? Because the ask may be, I want all of my money back. Okay? It doesn't mean you have to do it. Okay? But just get ready to produce something. Okay? The ask may be, I'm going to report you to the regulatory boards, and I'm going to get you cited for this, that, and the other. Give me the phone number. The ask may simply be, and this is the one that, that, that makes it easier on all of us, the ask may be, just make sure it gets right. Just make sure it gets taken care of from here on out. That's the easy one, okay? And then lastly, produce. Whatever the patient asks for, produce to a certain extent. Now, if it's completely free and you think it's, it's something that they want, you, you should give the entire refund back, then do it. Or say, listen, to be fair to everybody, how about we just meet in the middle? Try to produce something. It doesn't mean you have to oblige. That's not an O. It wouldn't spell leap if it was an O. Um, you don't have to oblige their, their request, okay? You just have to produce something. You just have to do something about it, all right? And an example of it is this, a real life email, okay? Uh, we talked about our Tom Davies line a while ago. I produced a custom made frame for this particular patient, okay? Anybody familiar with the manufacturing of titanium will tell you that titanium is terribly difficult to color. It's, it's hard to color titanium. So what I made for, for this particular patient is I made a silver outside titanium frame. I made, and it was red on the other side, okay? And I made them to the dimensions of her face, okay? There was a little bit of a delay because guess what? It's a custom product and they were all handmade, okay? Some of the machinery, I just had to cut some of the titanium, but they were handmade and hand, hand filed. And here she is complaining about everything, okay? She's complaining about her glasses, her clear glasses. She's really frustrated. Now, there's empathy right there, okay, with your office. This shouldn't have happened. I need to know how we're going to, she's already asking. Um, I've tried to order contact lenses. I'm not 100%. My sunglasses are even a problem. It, it's a long time coming, and expenses have been unwearable. What do you do about that? Oh, crud. Throw your hands up in the air and be done with it? Good. Here's my response. Because this happened this year, by the way. I turned the tide. I made it positive. I, I, I've made it positive for it. That's all it is. And just outline it for it, okay? Reference your contact lens ordering. I dropped the ball, evidently. I guess we did, okay? Did I miss something otherwise? Is there any, miss, any communication with our practice? To, on wanting to order your contacts and for me and I'll get it taken care of, okay? Secondly, we verified her glasses, her sunglasses uh, are progressive. If there are any questions, let me know. 
All right, we talked about, we talked about the process of the, the, the um, lenses, and then there are our optical hours there. Again, our, our, um, if you didn't believe me to begin with, our, our, our uh, what do you call it? This is what I'm in the office, I should say. Our, our appointments are longer than that. Let's arrange an appointment so I can visit this with you and get this right, okay? And here comes a response, okay? She's black, I'm blue, almost literally, because I'm sitting here begging my head, okay? Just a couple emails, and really, it's just it's really not that big of a deal. Here's the ask. I'm done. I'm done with this. This is the ask. Now, if we can just let bygones be bygones, can we just move forward? What can I do to make this better for you? I understand that you cannot drive. May I send somebody to come pick up your glasses for you? Would you like for me to order AccuView lenses for you? What, blah, blah, blah. Okay? Thank you. None of this is negative, by the way. You know, if I were too busy or didn't care, I wouldn't have time to respond as I do. I'm dedicated to getting this right. All of this is all positive. Terribly positive. How did I produce? Minor frame adjustment and one free contact lens box. She's out of my hair. She continues to see us. She continues to spread the word for us. And she, that's, that's what she talks about. Guess what she talks about now? Guess what she talks about? She talks about the free contact lens box she got. She didn't talk about any of that other stuff. All she could talk about from here on out, I heard you took care of Ms. Paris and that, you know, y'all had some difficulty, but at the end, she, you got, she got a free, free, pair of con, a free uh, box of contact lenses. Yeah, that's what we do. We're committed to service here. We're committed to getting it right. Okay? What did it cost me on the end? 45 bucks? $45. That was it. Okay? And the minor frame adjustment, how many support staff do we have in here? Just one? Two? Support staff? Opticians? Technicians? Okay. It'll frustrate you. It'll frustrate you because you know that, you, you know that, that in docs, I got I to gotta let you know this too. You know we get told different information, right? And it frustrates the technicians and the opticians the same way. We get told different information, right? And, and, and they go, we go reaming our technician about this, about this history that we're taking. Well, you never told me they were on blood pressure medication. They never told me either. But they told the doc, they told, they told the doctor, you know? And, and so here's, here's the part that frustrates you. The minor frame adjustment, and the reason why I say minor, is what I call a magic rub. This is a titanium block, okay? How much adjustment am I going to make in a quarter inch thick titanium frame? Do you see me doing it? How much? Uh. Here, Miss Paris, try these on. They're beautiful. I don't know I even put two degrees of panoscopic tilt on that frame, but just the mere fact that I sat down and I touched her and touched the frame was the magic. Sometimes it just takes and just that extra second to say, listen, let's just get it right. Okay? And by the way, the, at the end, it really was. At the, it was at the very end. She was like, I need to get my contacts straight taken care of. And I said, listen, with all the difficulties you've had, with all the delays you've had, it would be my pleasure, Ms. Paris, to provide, you a, a, to provide you a complimentary box of contact lenses. And she goes, well, you didn't really have to do that. I said, it's just absolutely my pleasure. Let me take care of it. And that was it. Done. Two most powerful words in, I believe, customer service are these. That's terrible. And the follow-up to that? What's the follow-up to that? Who here, who here is doing this already? If you, if you are, yell it out loud. I know somebody's doing it. It's about empathy. That's terrible. We got to fix that. Okay? We got to get that fixed. And you'll see that in every single one of my emails when we have patients that, that want to email me. Okay? Period. We just got to get it fixed. So here it is. This is actually the same email. That must be a terrible feeling. Let's get this resolved. Okay. All right, this is a little bit dated, but an example of, again, now let's take a deep breath here just a minute. I know everybody's probably kind of information overload right now going, what in the world? I just, 
This is a whole lot. I think I've given you all four pearls right now that you guys can take back tangibly. Okay. Hopefully the rest of it's kind of peripheral so you can understand where I'm coming from. Okay. Okay. But this is where this, 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 the rubber really meets the road. Okay. It's where the rubber really meets the road. This is an example that if you all can grasp um, and understand the, the, the aura, if you will, of customer care, now that we've built up to it, if you can grasp and understand the aura of customer care, not the semantics of how you do it, this, that, and the other, because I can't give you a cookbook about it. I've given you a few things, okay? But I can't give you a full cookbook, but this is the epitome, if you will, of customer care, I believe, okay? This is the reason why I leave it up there from 2009. Now, 2009, I remember, remember, I said I opened my practice in 2007. How many of y'all have opened up fresh practices and understand it within two years? You're probably not in the black exactly, okay? You're really not. You're probably still trying to pay a few things off, and you're probably struggling a little bit to get a few patients in the door, right? But how do, I, how do we still exist? Because we push forward with things like this. Because I dedicated the practice when we started up to nothing but pure customer service and customer care and the patient and customer comes first, okay? 2009, I can guarantee you I was still in the red. I guarantee I was still in the red in 2009. Two years in, Dr. Chief, can you send me a prescription? I lost my glasses. As a matter of fact, Tommy didn't lose his glasses. He spent a lot of money on his glasses. He went and got his hair cut took them off, put them on the chair, either left them there or somebody stole them. He doesn't realize. He doesn't, he doesn't remember. Okay? So he calls us back and he goes, I'm never going to spend that much money again. Okay? And our emails us back, I'm never going to spend that much money again. I need a prescription because I've because I don't have my glasses. Okay? This is Tommy. Here I am. That's terrible. All right? I'm sorry to hear that your glasses were stolen. People steal anything these days. What's somebody going to do with a pair of your prescribed glasses? Okay? I'm happy to extend a 50% off courtesy for your glasses. Keep in mind, if with this, you'll get the same insurance as breakage and scratches with the courtesy, meaning that we assure all of our lenses, we translate all of our lenses, um, the, uh, warranties, if you will, we call them assurances, warranties, warranties imply you're paying for something, okay? Assurances are a safeguard, if you will. We, we translate our same assurances and warranties that we get from our AR manufacturers. That's the reason why we're, you know, you guys are doing so much better than the United States when it comes to AR. 20% um, of our folks in the United States only do AR. 100% of my lenses, yeah. 20 to 30% in the United States only do AR. I saw somebody say, wow. Um, in our practice, it's 100%, okay, because of this. Because if you scratch your lens, guess what? It's called an AR warranty in our office. We don't tell patients that, we, but we call it internally an AR warranty. You just call me up, I scratch my lens. Fine, what frame is it that you bought from me? Okay, we contact the lab, cut it off our archive. Cut it off our archive, send it back, get our credit back for it. Okay, if it's not scratched when it comes back, guess what we do? Scratch it. No questions asked. Okay, seriously, no questions asked. All right, if you think it's a scratch and it was a smudge, oh well, well, we just backed it up for you, All right? So keep in mind that you're going to get all these. We're, just, we're, trying to, we're trying to reconcile. We're trying to keep them. Okay? We're trying to give them, we're trying to give them a courtesy because I think I could work within my rep to get that anyways. right? And then we'll give them all of that back. right? That was Tuesday. Tuesday response. Five days later, I ran into them at the grocery store. Okay? This was Memorial Day weekend in, in the United States. And I, and I said, hey, Tommy, did you ever get that prescription filled? He said, no, I've just been busy. He's grilling that, that weekend, and something just in my head just went, you know what, I think we need to take it to the next level. He's waited five days, he's been without his glasses for five days, something, he's dragging his feet on something, right? Look at the bottom response. That's the email. We are committed to the ultimate in customer care, to the point where it wasn't my fault that somebody stole his glasses. It wasn't his fault that somebody stole his glasses. But I'm gonna come in riding on my white horse. And we gave him an exact pair, duplicate it within a week, and um, take care of that. Here comes your lifetime membership. It's like a, like, like a fitness gym. You have a patient for life, okay? How much did it cost me? Wholesale? Whatever. Think it's real? I would say so. 
Here's 2009. I stopped at 2012. He's still currently a patient of ours. And this is what we recouped over in you, uh, just in that short period of time. That's him. That's his wife. That's his child. That's his other child. We do it all the time when it comes to knocking people's socks off. And I got some silence going on here that's weird and eerie on me right now. Um, but I'm not, in a, I'm, not in a, I'm not in the habit of giving stuff away, but I am in the habit of grabbing every single patient I can possibly get. Okay? And that is the way you do it. Okay? Go ahead and hang yourself. If you want, I, I gave you some words to live by. I'm going to give you some words to die by. Okay? Policies are made to be broken. Okay? If you want to start laying out the law in your, in your office, our policy is to do this. Our policy is not to do that. I will tell you, my team, my staff will tell you that if there is anything that they get yelled at in my office for, and they don't usually get yelled at. Actually, they don't get yelled at at all. Okay? They may get a stern look. Okay? They may get a stern, a stern uh, maybe not even a reprimand, but a stern comment. Okay? But if there's anything that will push me to the point of yelling at somebody, is, Dr. G, can I do this? You're wasting my time, you're wasting the patient's time. Just do it. Just do whatever it is. Just do whatever it is. Do whatever it is. Get it done. You know? They'll come to me. I can actually see it almost coming out of their mouth. I'm walking down the hallway. I can almost see it coming out of their mouth. And I go, J -j -j I'm going to the next room. Just go. Do it. Seriously. Do it. Empower your staff. Empower your team. You'll, they won't give the farm away. Trust me. Okay? And I'm not saying get into negotiation deals. Okay? I'm saying get it done. Okay? Prime example, Rue. Rue the other day was working with a patient. He had um, a limited budget. When I say limited, you'll, you'll, you'll enjoy this one. He had a, he had a quote, limited budget. He was on um, state-funded uh, Medicaid, and he hadn't had an eye exam in like seven years. First time, patient. He wanted to create some wow in this patient. Okay. Patient sits down, and he goes, listen, I drive all day long. My glasses, they're all beat up. Rue goes, listen. You need a pair of daytime glasses, you need a pair of driving glasses, okay? Office glasses, driving glasses, I should say, okay? That's what he tells me. The guy sits down and he goes, but I kind of like these. Lindbergh number one, salt number two. And Rue goes, okay. Um, well, he, it'd be really easy at that point for him on a limited budget and state-funded Medicaid to go, this guy can't afford this, let's go somewhere else. You're going to create some wow in this patient right now, right here, okay? So I wasn't in the middle of transaction by any means. I don't micromanage any of this. Again, like I say, I just empower them and just get it done, okay? Don't give the farm away. Just get it done, okay? So here's where he is. He walks out, and I go, how'd it go? And they don't always have to report to me. We're just going to chit-chat. I said, how'd it go? I said, I got it. I said, really? I said, yeah, I got it. He sat me down, and he said, this is what Ruth told, told me that the patient told him. He sat me down and he said, I have $1,500 in my pocket. And I want both of those pairs of glasses. Make it happen. Here's what Ruth did. Ruth figured out in his head that on the same day, we have this thing called pair 50. I'm sure a lot of number, number of y'all have this with your lab. If you order the same, pair, same prescription, same, same pair of lenses on the same day, your lab's gonna to extend to you a 50% off discount, okay? Rue figured out that we also had a, a little voucher in the back from our Lindbergh initial buy-in, okay, for a free frame. And Rue came out ahead more than if we would have charged him straight up, okay? And he sat down and he had it done, he got it done. So here's what happens. The rest of the team comes, hey, I don't understand. What in the world? What'd you do? How, how did this happen? I mean, this just doesn't look right. The, the fee slip's all messed up. It's all jumbled. And you, you, he said he had $1,500, and he wanted both pairs of glasses, and we got it done. Case closed. Out the door. All right. Again, it's not about negotiating. It's about getting it done. We have no policies. We never say can't. Okay? And we definitely do not say, I'll check with my boss on that. Okay. 
Any questions? Gosh, you are quiet out there. There's a big mic right here in the middle if somebody wants to ask a question. Um, words to live by, however. It's the best way to handle that. So sometimes patients need guidance. Sometimes they'll give you a carte blanche answer like that one. So for instance, what if you had picked $5,000 worth of glasses and he said, I have, 15, I have only $1,500. Well, you know what, Mr. Smith? That was really his name. Mr. Smith, that's a little bit difficult to do with, with $1,500, but I can get you in a pair of driving glasses and office glasses, all right? Let's go back to the frame board and find something that's within your budget. Best way to handle it, okay? To be fair to everyone, and this is the one that we use quite a bit when it comes to managed care. I know y'all had a panel discussion a while uh, yesterday about um, from some goofy guys called Scott Morris, and I know I'm being recorded, so um, that's fine. Scott and I are buddies, and he, and he can fly off the handle a little bit, and he, so, so can I. And John the same way, we both can fly off the handle, and we, we were chatting about a few things. But I know y'all had a panel discussion about um, managed care. And this is where this, this plays a big role in managed care for me, okay? Because really, truly, frankly, it is something that you have to use. To be fair to everyone, it is not fair for somebody that comes in and pays a monthly premium for a, man, for, for a, um, for a vision plan to get the same treatment as somebody that, it, that doesn't. So a cash pay patient that wants their quote, a quote uh, VSP discount or IMED discount or whatever vision plan discount may be, somebody that wants a discount, that's not fair to that person that's paying the premium. And that's what we tell folks, to be fair to everybody, this is what I can work out for you, all right? And then finally, the key ones, the key thing is, is let's just make it easy for everybody. You heard me say that in the, in the contact lens example, okay? Let's just make this easy. Let bygones be gone, bygones, let's just move forward. I don't have time for this. You don't have time for this. Let's just get it right, okay? All right. Who wears scrubs in the office? I think I'm like the same hand or else nobody else is paying attention. Now, without any pretense, I will tell you, I don't, we don't do scrubs in the office, mainly because we just don't, and there's no real reason. We just don't. Um, I believe in uniformity. I believe that there's, there's got to be some type of uniform in our office. So, for instance, I will oftentimes see patients like this, okay? Actually, four days a week I see patients like this, okay? Saturdays I don't. Um, or Fridays, I should say, I'm wearing a golf shirt. So, if you come in and Rue or Kenneth you come in and you've got an unbuttoned, unpressed shirt, you look goofy. Um, you don't look bad, you just look goofy because you don't fall in with everything else, okay? If you come in and you're Alyssa and you're wearing a, sh a skirt that's about this short, you look a little goofy, okay? And I, ha I had to address that a little bit, okay? For the most part, there's some, we, we're on the same page most of the time, okay? But you want personality, Okay, and your presentation, presentation of your staff. The other thing too is, here's what, I, here's what I will tell you will boost your team and will boost your, uh, your office staff 100%. The next person you hire, hire them off of their attitude as opposed to their ability or aptitude, okay? I've taken folks that don't even know how to use, don't, don't even know right and left to a certain extent. Um, and made them some of my best support staff. It was a hard, it was a long haul, okay? But they had, they had no knowledge whatsoever when it came to the eye. But they had the attitude to learn and they wanted to learn, okay? Higher off of attitude, not aptitude, okay? If you could take that, and I'll tell you, here's what you're slapped with when you, when you come in. I mentioned it previously. Here's our, here's our mission statement. Have them read it recite it to them that you have it memorized and then watch their facial expression. That goes to step one. You gotta have a mission statement to begin with, okay? Number two, you slap it on them and say, listen, this is what we are here for, okay? How many times have I had folks show up at our office? I mean, you know, you're not dumb. You shouldn't be. You should go to our website and see our website, maybe go to our Facebook page, maybe, maybe follow us a little bit, do a little bit of research. If you're gonna come in and kinda of Get, get, an, uh, get an interview, I won't see a person that comes in dressed inappropriately for, for an interview. I'm sorry. That's just wasting everybody's time. Because that means I'm not going to remold you, okay? You've used the wrong, the wrong, uh, the inappropriate judgment. So we're not going to remold you, okay? All right. Second thing is 
it, when, you, when you give these to these folks, again, you have, them, you have them read it, and you say, listen, I'm always going to come back to this. These are the words to live by. These are the words to live by. All right? You create a culture. And when you create that culture, it just lifts everything up. Everything just kind of floats. It's like cloud nine. When I go in the office, I love going in the office. I really do. I love lecturing, but I love going in the office. There, I miss seeing patients sometimes. I do. Because you know what? Because I see all this fun stuff going on in the background. Okay? I have cameras in every one of my exam lanes. Okay? So when I'm on the road, sometimes I'll get bored and I'll tap in on my phone. I can do it on my phone. And I, and I, and I watch. They're just like... They just dance through the, the office. They, they float through the office. And I see people walking people out the door. You know, it's, it's so much fun to see the culture in the office. So all of these things should bring, should bring some, um, some gratitude, if you will, if you will, uh, if you will, satisfaction to your office, all right? Your office manual. Do you have one? This is mine. This is it. This is it. Take care of the patient. When in doubt, visit number one. I believe that practice management, the word P and the word practice management, needs to be replaced with patient management. Because when you take care of your patients, the practice will take care of itself. Okay? The business aspect, if you will, profits and losses and whatnot, that's a whole other issue. But I'm talking about the practice itself. It will run if you take care of your patients. And that's what we subscribe to, and that's what folks understand. That's what folks come to expect. All right. Presentation of products. I'm all about quality. Quality, 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 quality. Because here's the thing. Stop selling junk. You, you take that $1.50 wholesale frame that you've marked up to I don't know how, how, how much, and how many adjustments does that patient have to come in and keep doing? You know how much time that takes away from your opticians that are having to complete, constantly readjust that frame? Right? So I'm not saying high end all the time. I'm saying quality. Okay? And my frame reps that come in and visit with us, I'll pop in, they visit with our with our team um, most of the time, but I'll pop in and I'll pick up a frame and they cringe. They cringe. And when they cringe, if you can feel if you can feel them squeezing a little bit, uh, it, it, it means that they don't have they don't have they don't have confidence in what they're selling. So I'll pick up a frame out of their out of their frame uh, tray and I'll start doing all kinds of stuff to it. I won't try to break it. I'll just I'll feel the sturdiness of it or whatnot. And that's what we, what we want to feel. We want to feel sturdy frames. We want to feel frames that will hold their shape that we don't have to continually re, redo adjustments on because that's just eating away at time. I want somebody to be able to do maybe a minor adjustment once, twice, and be done with it. Okay? Same thing goes for lens. Same thing goes with lens packages. Uh, we, have, we have things that we package together, and it all wraps all together about branding. Okay? So this is our normal... Our, our normal packaging, if you will, all right? This is a, excuse me here. This is a tinted, double-sided, uh, gosh, um, kind of plastic type of a bag, and it's got, it, it's got uh, paper, ta uh, paper um, cardboard on the bottom. And what do I want folks to do with this? You got it. That's exactly what I want folks to do. I want folks to reuse that bag. External marketing, okay? This was our first bag, okay? We've gone through like five different renditions of bags, okay? You got a personalized um, spray bottle. Inside, you have a personalized lens cloth. I've got branding all over the place, okay, when it comes to this, all right? Second thing, you spend a little bit more money with us, and this is a straight, direct steal from Lululemon, okay? I want people to reuse them, this one too. This is a really, really, really nice bag, okay? Give you an idea, US dollars, the first bag probably cost me about, probably about 75 cents, okay? This one cost me about $1.80. Well, what's $1.80 when you're looking at a couple thousand dollar um, uh, frame, okay? When you put lenses and everything in it, all right? But what about this one? That one's fun. We love that one. Guess who gets that one? The kids. The kids get that one. I absolutely love it when I go through the neighborhood and I see kids riding on their bikes, on their skateboards with their sling backpacks on. Okay? We had so much success with this. This was our first bag. We had so much success with this. Guess what we did next? We made insulated lunch bags. And we put their, we put their, we put their glasses in it. Guess what? School fair. I see them at the school fair. You know where we are now? You know fanny packs are making a comeback? 
We have, we have fanny packs now for the kiddos. It's just one thing after another. In here, by the way, I don't know if it was in, no, it's not in there. We also throw a little piece of chocolate. Simple, we go to Costco and buy a big old bag of Hershey's nuggets and just throw, uh, throw one in there. I mean, it's easy. This is just easy stuff. FYI, yeah, these cost a little bit, okay? But how, how many kids am I gonna see? How many, how many people are gonna see that? I'm all over it, I'm all over it. If y'all need questions, if y'all have questions about where to obtain some of this merchandising, if you don't already have somebody in place, um, let me know. I, I, it's, it's fairly inexpensive, like I say, when you buy it on the bulk and you're seeing that many patients, it's easy to do. I mean, how many, who, who's not gonna get excited about somebody see, seeing somebody riding around in a neighborhood or riding around the street with their, with their name on the back? That's a moving billboard right there, right? Where'd you go get your glass? Oh, gee, I could. All right, um, this was a poll question that I had in there. All right, that's another poll question. Websites. I'm kind of torn on this, okay? I'm just a little bit torn on this. That websites, first of all, they, they need to be informational. Stuff needs to be on there regular, they need, and things need to be updated. Um, you know, you need to keep it fresh. There's something, but in my, I'm, I'm getting to the point where I really think and I believe that more marketing is going social and viral than it is going static on websites. Okay, your websites need to be there as a presence, okay? They need to be functional. There needs to be things there that you work in, that, that work on your, on your website. Like, what products do you use? Um, what, what, you know, what's my bio? What's Dr. Hunter's bio? And our website, particularly the number one hit that we always get on ours, our number one and two hits, number one is our demographics and review of systems, okay, where everybody goes to. And the other one is our community support, our community support page where we have every logo that we've done in the community on this web page. Okay, people go to that because they want to know, does this guy support my, my kid's school? Well, I'm gonna go to him, I'm not gonna go to the other one, right? And I have sequential years, like listed all the way out, the actual logo, ask for a logo, that's part of it. When you come and ask me for a couple thousand dollars for a, for a sponsorship, I, all I want is a digital logo, okay? That's all I want is a digital logo because that's also gonna go on our viral, um, our viral sites, our social sites, if you will. Uh, I believe also too, as I alluded to earlier, in one-stop e-commerce. I believe that your websites could very well act as e-commerce sites, okay? So, as I list here, websites need to be branded. You need to know, people know what this means, okay? They know what that G means. That needs to be informational, it needs to have some information on there. It needs to be functional, there need to be things that work on your website. You can't click there and go to a dead site, go to a dead, dead website. I mean, you gotta check your clicks, all right? Um, and then if you want to go to added mile, putting, putting something on there for e-commerce is, is important. So as I, as I alluded to, when you go to our website, gicare.com, and by the way, if any of y'all go to our website right now, you'll probably pull up our mobile version, which is kind of neat. We have a mobile site as well that's formatted just for your mobile device. Um, or you can go to our full display. And when you go to our full display, you'll see at the very top has all of our Facebook friends. And then it also right below it has the e-commerce, okay? Um, but what I'm saying I'm kind of torn from it because we used to be so website centric and I in, in our peer to peer um, Interaction there are things that show that Folks are going to go somewhere else and get a peer review before they're going to or a, a, a person review before they do uh, Did I hear somebody's phone go off? That was cool um, before, they, uh, before they actually go to your website. They're going to go to Yelp. They're going to go to Yahoo. They're going to go to Google, they're gonna go to whatnot. So I saw somebody scan it. Did you get into that? Oh, okay, so actually if you scan this, that takes you back to, that takes you to our Facebook page. Um, this is our old website, or my old website. When I added my associate, we had to tweak things around. So it's got my signature, it's got, you know, um, click here for a special message, it has an introduction to me. Are you ready to be catered to? Today's customer service is failing, you know. That's, that's 2007, that was established in 2007, y'all. That's what the groundwork by which we stand upon. Pushing the wrong buttons. How many of y'all have Facebook pages? How many of y'all actively monitor your Facebook pages? How about Twitter? Yelp? Yeah, Yelp is a little bit different. I don't know, um, I Yelp some stuff, and I have, I have a little difficulty with Yelp, I'm not bad-mouthing them, I just, I can't figure them out. 
Um, this is where I believe technology needs to go into play. Your websites are one of the things that all, it's all one thing. It's all together. It's not just one thing. It's websites. It's email. It's constant communication. It's social networking. It's, you know, just sometimes even just straight up mail, okay? Uh, sometimes you may need to actually mail somebody something. And the reason why I say that is because I find myself about once a week writing about five to six handwritten thank you notes to patients. Handwritten from the doctor, okay? And if it happens to be a referral from another patient or something of that sort for another patient, they get thrown in a Starbucks card or some type of gift card in there. Thank you for your referrals. Continue so. I appreciate it. Thank you. Blah, blah, blah. I will tell you, I write, I handwrite, and I can't tell you how many times patients will call back and go, that was the nicest thing that somebody's ever done for me in a long time. We have recoined a new phrase, and it's now we're going to become our new slogan, okay? And see if y'all, see, I just, y'all are my bounce crowd now. I bounced it off of Vision Expo crowd, but you're my first folks that I've talked to since I've implemented. Okay, we have a new tagline, a new phrase that says, old-fashioned care and customer service with new knowledge and technology. That's us. That's our new tagline. Okay? You're going to get bedside manner. You're going to get talked to. Every test that we do on you, we're going to explain. We're going to show it to you. And it's going to be not technician-driven. It's going to be doctor-driven. Okay? And we're going to have the technology to be able to do that. And by the way, with the technology, when you put all the technology together, it makes me more efficient so I can actually do that. Okay? Where I can actually sit down and talk to you over the results that are going on. I can make recommendations in the chair of what I think you need. And I can, by the way, ask you for your referrals. So that's pearl number five. Okay? Pearl number five for you all is to go home. And it may be a little bit daunting. Okay? But for go home and on Monday ask at least one patient, point blank, would you mind referring your friends and family to come see us? Thank you. I mean, how many of us really do that? Some of us assume it. Okay? But if you come out right, blatantly ask, oh, sure, sure enough, let me take a extra, couple extra cards. Give them two cards. So here's one for you to keep for your records, here's another one for you to pass along. Easy. Easy. We're just not asking. Um, I, I alluded to this, so I'm going to finish up a few l loose ends um, that we didn't talk about in the, previous, uh, in the previous talk. But the best thing since sliced bread, um, in my opinion, these online confirmation, unlimited newsletter surveys, online payments, birthday notifications, things of that sort. And so this is what Solution Reach does for me. There's other com companies out there that do that. Again, in full disclosure, I am a consultant for Solution Reach, but there are comp other companies out there that do that, like Demand Force and Web Systems, th web systems and For Patient Care. But I work with these guys uh, exclusively, and they've been doing a great job for me. Um, do I do surveys? Yes, I do. What's my average rate? I showed some, some, uh, some screenshots previously that I get over 20% of my surveys respond, uh, uh, to respond by. Okay, folks respond to my surveys by at least 20%, and this is what we're looking at. Now, I, I talked about this because we talked about what my metric it was. Here's the question. Somebody asked me this at, at lunch. Rate the time in which you waited to see Dr. G. Now, I don't get this. I really don't get the 2%. I think the 2% are the people that just, you're never going to get anything out of. I don't know. But it's not even, that person didn't even respond good on any of this other stuff. So again, I'm not offended by that. It just makes me introspect on that a little bit, okay? So here's what I did, is I went back and I asked the staff. I said, do y'all think the wait time includes the wait time to see me because you're working them up? Because if that's the case, then you probably need to work them up a little bit faster, okay? Because we have no waiting room. <laughs> we have no waiting room. I don't get it. I don't get that. And here's the other thing I don't get. I don't get the 40%. I mean, because the minute you walk in the door, you get your credit, you get your driver's license scanned, you get your insurance card scanned, and you walk straight back. I don't get the wait time. So I, I, think, I think the wait time revolves around the fact that folks don't get to actually see me. And we need to work on that workup time. And I think that's where it is. And I haven't hammered them to death about it, but there's something to be said about this. Professionalism in front office staff. You see how these are in 65%? Pretty good, actually. You, you, you look at it, you go pretty good, right? Yeah, um, your experience with me, 
And the exam is close to 90% exceptional. They don't want to go anywhere else. They've never experienced anything like that ever before. Okay, And it's a little bit outdated because it's always transient. Things are always transient. Every, not transient, but things are moving. Things are dynamic, I should say, is what it is. And what we've added on here, I didn't put this, the screenshot up here, is we also have Dr. Hunter, who has her survey. And her survey actually shows that her exceptional rating, gosh, her exceptional rating is somewhere on the line of about 65%, right in line, right in tow, with about 60% of all these things about our support staff. Okay. She and I had a conversation about it. Again, I didn't reprimand her, colleagues, an employee, but we still talk about it. And I talked about it. I said, listen, folks are making comments about you online. And we'll talk about that here in a minute. Folks are making comments about you online that are phenomenal. They absolutely 100% love you. They say their experience with you is awesome. Okay. But why can't you get it here? Why can't you get it here? And you know what we came down to? That's how I, I just left it like that. She goes, I think you know how to push the buttons better than I do. And I said, I think so. So do you need to spend some time with me in the exam lane, maybe record a few things that I'm doing in the exam lane and learn a few touchy-feely type things um, to, to, to boost that up? Because really, you're, bun you're bunching in with the technicians. You're bunching in with the rest of the staff, OK? And, and you're not. You're better than that, really. All of us are better than that. We all should be at like 90%. And that's the challenge. That's the Ritz-Carlton retreat right there. When this one hits 88 or 89 or 95%, that's when we're all taking a vacation. Okay? Here's the other part that's really neat. Okay? It shows that only 50% of our, this is how we look at our surveys. This is why surveys are so important. It shows that only about 50%, or, okay, let's give them a little benefit of, benefit of doubt. Only about 60% of my patients, just over half, are being told that they get a delivery. Okay? But close to 80% of them, a little over 80% of them, say that that's a value to them. Okay? That's an unpaid value. That's an intangible. That's a two second. When your glasses and contacts come in, we'll be happy and pleased to deliver them to you. Two seconds. Okay? And 80% of the patients will tell you that, yes, it is a value to them but we fall short of it because only half of our folks are being told, okay? And so we have that conversation, and guess what? This has been turned over all over again, all right? Overall experience, okay, you can't be all things to all people, but you see all those zeros down at the bottom? That's what I'm talking about, okay? We wanna be right up here. These are the only two that I accept, all right? Anything special? What was your most memorable Experience at GI Care. This is the free text that people get a big old box and they can tell us anything that they want to tell us about, okay? And this is what, this is, these are the things that we get back, all right? This, I like this one. By far the coolest exam I've ever had. Explained everything. Gave me plenty of opportunity to ask questions. This person actually signed, so I didn't have to block her name out. As, as a healthcare professional for 40 years, okay? And actually, I can click on that and I can actually look at the survey itself that she responded to, okay? Feel free to comment on anything. Finally, in summary, when you hang out with excellent customer service, it, you breathe it, okay? You just breathe it, all right? So surround yourself. Find yourself in a hotel lobby, okay? Differentiate yourself because, my, as my saying always goes, oh, hang on a second. Um, as my saying always goes, if you keep doing what you're doing, you're going to keep getting what you get. You've got to push the envelope. You've got to go there, okay? And so I'll leave you with a couple of things. These are my two favorite books ever, okay? How many of y'all have read either one of these? All right. And you all probably, if you've read this one, you probably heard a lot about what I'm doing here. I'll tell you, I read this book after, you know, you know I don't know when the copyright, when the, when the publish date was on it, but I read that and I went, man, I'm doing something right. And then I went, okay, I could be doing that better, okay? And I've actually met Jeff Gettemer before. I've given these away for people. I mean, it just, it, it's to me something to live by, all right? And the key phrase in here is customer satisfaction. When people are satisfied, they don't care. They go anywhere, okay? But 
customer loyalty is priceless. And that's that end result, that example I was telling you about, about taking it to the next level. If you want to learn a little bit about the Ritz Carlton, you can do it there. Again, I have no, Doug disclosed that I have nothing to do with the Ritz Carlton. I just love the way they do things. Does anybody have any questions? Really? All right, so I'm going to leave you with this. We've got some pearls to go home to implement with, all right? The second, the second thing I'm going to leave you with is my email. Is, that's not me. Um, that is me, but that's not what I wanted to show. That's fine. My email is on your, on, on your slides. If you, want, or if you want the slides, let me know, okay? But if you just go, hey, listen, Kevin, I think you're off. I think that that's completely wrong. I, I think, I, I, don't, I don't get it, okay? Let me know. I, I'll take it all day long. You, we, we talked about this. I take this all day long, but I will take challenging questions, and I will help you out as well. But I'm going to tell you, I truly believe and we'll talk with you over the phone, via email, via text, via whatever. Follow us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, find the things that we do, our WordPress blog, find our website, do something, um, and I'd be more than happy to answer any questions up front. But y'all, appreciate y'all's attention. Thanks so, thanks so much.